Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about um, just a basic henna kit and what you need to get started, whether you're a beginner in henna or you just kind of want to play around with it as a hobby or you want to get together with your friends and just have a little fun. I'm just going to um, tell you what you need to get started. I know there's a lot of henna kits on the market. There's a lot. If you Google henna kit, you're going to come up with so many different things. Um, a lot of retailers selling you things, a lot of stuff you really don't need, you may not find yourself using. And uh, so I'm just going to show you just the basics of what you need and uh, show you how really inexpensive it can be to get started. So first, I'm going to talk about applicators. Um, applicators is a really, really um, popular question for me. Everyone wants to know what do I need to apply, what's going to give me the best technique and whatnot. The most common applicator that you're going to see is the cone applicator and you can actually make these yourself. I have video tutorials on how to do so and those videos give you tutorials on where you can find the materials but you can actually find the materials close to where you are if you live near a craft store or even a florist or even a dollar store. Sometimes dollar stores carry um, cello paper so you can make uh, henna cones very, very easy. Most popular applicator. Another applicator is the bottle with metal tips. Um, this happens to be the one that I carry. This is just a half ounce bottle with um, stainless steel blunt end tip. Um, there's other applicator bottles. The Jack bottle's been around forever. It's a really popular option. Um, they're going to be comparable in price. The um, only thing about the Jack bottles and these bottles is that the tips are not um, compatible with each other. So you won't be able to switch out the tips between bottles. Um, if you get this bottle, you'll only be able to use the lure lock tips or use the stainless steel tips, which I have here. With the Jack bottles, you'll only be able to use the Jack tips, which are kind of cone-shaped. So um, the benefits to using the bottle, however, is that in the middle of a design, if you want to use a larger line size, all you do is have to switch out the tip, and it's really, really easy. Um, and I have a tutorial on how to use these bottles, so I won't go into too much detail on that. So, yeah, those are the applicators. In order to fill your applicators, you're going to need something called a carrot bag. And you might also know these as pastry bags. They're available in most uh, baking sections at your grocery store or at your craft store. My local craft store is a Michael's. Um, and Michael's has a baking section where you can buy like candy making and cake decorating supplies. Um, so these are used in baking for um, uh, filling and for um, icing cakes and whatnot. And it's kind of a triangle shape on the bottom. Carrot bags range anywhere from 10 inches long to 18 to 20 inches long. Um, most of the time I get them that are about 12 inches long. And they have an opening here. So it's open, you put the henna in there. You squish it all the way to the bottom, and then you fill either your applicator bottle or your applicator cone. You can actually, um, if you can't find any um, carrot bags locally, you can order them on the internet. I don't sell them, though there are some henna retailers that do sell them. And you can also use um, Ziploc bags. However, Ziploc bags are a little bit messier because they don't have the tip on it like... Um, they don't have this, you know, pointed tip that the carrot bag has. And also, if you're going to buy carrot bags from your local grocery store or from your local craft store, be careful to buy the the, the carrot bag that has the, the pointed tip because sometimes they sell them where they're open at the bottom so that the, um, the bakers can put uh, um, their plastic tips in there and... Uh, decorate their cakes and whatnot. So they do come open at the bottom and they also come closed. So be sure to buy the closed tipped carrot bags. But these are just for filling applicators and they are fairly inexpensive. And if you use a lot of them, you can buy them on bulk on the internet. And uh, so yeah, that's it for applicators. Um, and then there are two other things that you're gonna find fairly easy. And it's just plain old white table sugar, and it's not anything special. It's just the plain cheap white stuff. They eat too much of it. It's bad for your teeth. It's bad for your health, that kind of stuff. You can also use brown sugar, however. I'm, I don't really notice a huge difference between um, the white sugar and brown sugar when I put it in my henna paste. It's actually just put in henna paste just to make it a little more stringy. You can drape your lines a little finer without them breaking. 
and uh, it makes the henna sticky and it sticks nicely to the skin. So that's all that sugar is used for. If you have any more questions about that, I would recommend you watch my henna paste mixing videos and I talk a little bit about the benefits of using sugar and henna paste in those. But for this video, we just need, you know, white sugar and you can buy it find it fairly cheap at your local grocery store or maybe it's already in your cabinet and it's starting to hail so if you can hear a lot of background noise I apologize for that anyway um, and then you have lemon juice and you can buy it in the bottle or you can buy the lemons themselves and squeeze them this is a pretty nice sized bottle of lemon juice it's pretty big and um, yeah, it's fairly inexpensive. You can buy it at your local grocery store. If you mix your henna with bottled lemon juice or fresh squeezed lemon juice from a lemon, there's not a huge difference. You can also use lime juice or limes as well. Um, there's not a difference. But to buy the bottled lemon juice, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a time saver. I don't like to sit there and juice lemons. So, you know, but if you do, hey, more power to you. So... The last two things are going to be your essential oil and it's going to be the henna powder itself. I save these two for last because these are going to be the two most expensive things in your starter henna kit. The essential oils that I recommend are going to be eucalyptus, tea tree, lavender, and ketchup. Um, any other oils other than those, I really don't see the benefit in using them. Those four or five or however many I said are um, pretty good oils. They're pretty easy to find. Your local grocery store might have eucalyptus or tea tree or lavender. They're usually going to sell them in these little tiny bottles, though, and the price is usually going to be um, insane. I would check out your local health food store or um, any kind of you know natural store where they sell oils. I actually have a couple of um, stores here in my city that specialize in essential oils, so that's kind of a cool thing though they do charge a lot. You can also buy essential oils on the internet. Um, fairly inexpensive. That's what I do. I buy them in bulk off the internet because I use so much of it. But if you don't use a lot of it, just buy a little tiny one if you're in a local grocery store and uh, that should suit you just fine. And then you've got your henna powder. This is my So Hot Supreme Rajasthani henna powder. Um, it's available in my Etsy store. Or you can use Jamila. I highly recommend Jamila Henna. That's a, another one that's really, really great for beginners. It's very user-friendly. Um, so you're going to spend a, a bulk of your money on these two items, which you may have to buy off the internet. I recommend buying your henna powder from a, um, a reputable dealer who specializes in selling body art quality henna. You can also buy henna in your local Asian or Middle Eastern grocery store. And by Asian, I mean like Indian or Pakistani. Um, you're probably not going to find this in henna in a store that specializes in Japanese or Chinese foods. Um, and so, uh, but the one thing you want to be careful about buying your uh, henna from a, an imports or uh, or Indian grocery is that sometimes the henna isn't stored properly so it might sit in a shelf in a really hot place for a really long time the henna could be five or six years old which is not henna that you really want to use not that it's dangerous but it's not going to give you a really good stain also um, the henna might have sand or it may have green dye in it which you know that's not really something that you want in your henna you just want pure natural, even organic if possible, henna powder. Um, some of the um, natural grocery stores or health food stores will sell henna in bulk, but it's usually not body art quality. It's usually henna for hair. So you want to be clear about the distinction between the two. Henna for hair usually isn't sifted as fine. It usually is not the freshest crop, and so you want to use the latest crop and the body art quality henna. And so that's where a bulk of your money is going to be spent. Um, you really don't need to buy a whole lot of henna if you're a beginner. 100 grams should get you started just fine. Um, so, yeah, there you have it, the basics of a henna kit. You can probably get all of these things you need for less than $30 or $40. And if you're spending that much, it's going to be everything that you need. Um, yeah, so I also have beginner henna kits in my Etsy store if you're interested in those. Or if you have any questions about um, pricing as far as how much things should cost locally, 
I would really do your research locally. We all live in different states, cities, and countries, and sometimes things for something that's really cheap in the U.S. is going to be really expensive somewhere else. So uh, I would just recommend doing your own research. And um, the only thing that I don't have pictured here is probably going to be some sort of design book. There are a lot of ebooks for henna patterns available all over the internet. I would recommend going the ebook route. I really would not recommend going the hardbound henna design pattern book route. Um, just because there are trends in henna that come and go. The you know the cover is really fancy, but once you look inside, the designs are really lame. And so, I mean, you can have that with an ebook too, but the ebooks are not going to be as ex expensive, and you're going to have a choice in the style of henna that um, you see. So, yeah, that that would be the only thing I don't have here. And and you can always watch my videos for free and get design ideas there, or check out my blog. I've got some free patterns on there as well. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe. Um, thumbs up this video if you like it and um, check out my Instagram, my blog, my Facebook, Pinterest, all that stuff. All that stuff's going to be in the bottom bar, um, easy for you to access. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.